class and welcome to section 11.7 which is about mixed expressions and complex fractions. By the end of today's lesson you will be able to simplify both of these concepts. So a mixed expression is the sum or the difference of a monomial and a rational expression. So of a single number variable or product of number of variables and then a rational expression so that fraction with an expression on both the top and the bottom. The complex fraction is a fraction inside of a fraction. So there's going to be a fraction in the numerator as well as in the denominator, and we are going to have to simplify that. Mixed expressions. Just like we did in the last lesson, in order to be able to add things, we need to have a common denominator. So I need to currently, I'm at 5y over 1. I need to have a common denominator, so I'm going to have to multiply it by this denominator right here. So we're going to multiply top and bottom, so 5y times 4y plus 8 over 1 times 4y plus 8. And when I multiply by 1, it just gives me that expression itself. And then the second one, nothing is changing because we already have my denominator of 4y plus 8, so the 6y stays up top. Then we need to do distributive property, so I've got 4 times 5, which is 20 y squared plus 5y times 8, which is 40y. And then that stays over our common denominator of 4y plus 8. And then 6y over 4y plus 8. Then I'm going to go ahead and add those values. So I've got 20y squared plus 40y plus 6y, which gives me plus 46y over 4y plus 8. And then per usual, we're going to want to check if there are any common factors. Up top, both of them can be factored by 2y. So I'm going to take out a 2 and a y, and I'm left with 10y plus 23. And then on the bottom, I can also take out a 2. So I'm going to take out a 2, and I'm left with y plus 4 after I divide everything by 2. Then in order to do that simplifying, we crash out any matching factors. So in this case, the 2. And I am left with y times 10y plus 23 over y plus 4. So that's as simplified as I can get for this particular mixed expression. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Common denominator of x minus 4. Up top, we distribute it and we get 2x minus 8. And then we add on that 5 from the second expression. 8, negative 8 plus 5 gives me the minus 3, and there is nothing else to simplify. The other thing we're looking at here is complex fractions. When we are looking at complex fractions, we want to make sure we are actually dealing with fractions. Right now we have mixed numbers in both the numerator and the denominator, so I'm going to want to turn that into an improper fraction. A reminder, in order to do that, we do denominator times whole number plus the numerator. So 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 gives me 14 thirds as my numerator, and then my denominator is 2 times 8, which is 16, plus 5, which gives me 21 eighths as my denominator. While this might look complex, what this really means is you are doing 14 thirds divided by 21 eighths. So if I wrote that out what more like you are used to seeing, it would say 14 thirds divided by 21 eighths. If you remember from before, in order to divide fractions, you need to keep change and then flip. Keep the first fraction as 14 over 3 change the sign to multiplication, and flip the second fraction to 8 over 21. Then I'm going to look to cross-reduce. In this case, 14 and 21 can both be divided by 7, so we reduce to 2 and 3. After I multiply, I get 2 times 8, which is 16, over 3 times 3, which is 9. Reducing that back to a mixed number, 9 goes in one time, and I have 7 ninths left over. 
So my simplified fraction is 1 and 7 ninths. Go ahead and try this one on your own. So we had 7 tenths divided by 15 nineteenths. Flip that to 7 tenths times 19 fifteenths. That gives you 133 over 150, and that cannot be reduced. This idea also applies to um, rational expressions, so instead of just numbers, but the idea remains the same. So we're still doing that top fraction, which is negative 24 m to the third t to the fifth over p squared h divided by our bottom fraction of 16 p m squared over t to the fourth h. Again, we're going to want to simplify this, so I'm going to need to keep the first fraction the same, 24 m to the third t to the fifth over p squared h, change division to multiplication, and flip that second fraction so the numerator and denominator are reversed. Then we're going to go ahead and cancel out where we can. 16 and 24 can both be divided by 8, so I've got a negative 3 and 2. m to the third can be reduced and canceled with m squared, so that cancels out and we're left with just 1m. Looking at the other way, h cancels out with h. So up top, we are left with negative 3, m, t to the 5th, and t to the 4th, which gives me t to the ninth. And then on the bottom, I'm left with 2, p squared, and p, which gives me p to the 3rd. So all those pieces left over combine into our final fraction. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Set it up as a division problem, keep, change, flip, and cancel out. We end up with 6a to the 2nd, b to the 4th, c to the 7th, over d to the 3rd power. This also works when we have expressions that involve addition and subtraction. As you did with simplifying problems, you're going to want to break these down. First, we're going to set it up as our division problem. So we've got n squared plus 7n minus 18 over n squared minus 2n plus 1 divided by n squared minus 81 over n minus 1. We're going to go ahead and keep change flip. As I'm doing this, I'm going to break it down. So things that multiply to 18 that add up to 7 are negative 9 and 2. So n minus 9, n plus 2. Things that multiply the 1 that add to negative 2 are negative 1 and negative 1. So we kept that first fraction the same, we just factored it. Change division to multiplication. Then that second fraction needs to be flipped. n minus 1 can't be simplified. n squared minus 81 is a difference of squared, so n minus 9, n plus 4. You're going to go ahead and cancel out what you can. So we cancel out an n minus 9 and an n minus 9, an n minus 1 and an n minus 1. Then we're multiplying. The only thing left up top is n plus 2. On the bottom, I get n minus 1 times n plus 9. Nothing else can be canceled out or simplified, so that is our final answer. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Keeping the first, there's nothing to factor. As you change and flip, you can factor a squared minus 9 to a plus 3 and a minus 3. The a plus 3's cancel out, and you end up with 2 times a minus 3 over 5. Or if you wanted to simplify that, you could say 2a minus 6 over 5. If you have questions about this or anything else from the lesson, please let me know when you get to class.